What is up jiggies, it's Baron here. Today we're going to be doing a deep dive on the Hammerhead. Before we get into it, don't forget those T16,000 giveaway hashtag sticks. Become a channel member or patron to get extra entries. Also, don't forget to join the Discord and check out the links in the description. But we're going to get straight into it. With the Aegis Hammerhead, we know that this is in the game currently. A lot of people don't like it. A lot of people do like it. So we're going to do a deep dive on the Hammerhead today and go into depth about this ship and its core history. Because this ship has been around since around... 2765 as High Command just issued a request for a proposal seeking a dedicated anti-fighter platform that could serve as both a key element for the standard fleet screen and as a cost-effective patrol ship to replace the um, Guan class. Aegis was tasked with developing the warship. So the Guan class was a little bit before its time of the Hammerhead obviously and the Hammerhead's coming in to actually replace this class of a ship. I don't know what it looks like. I would show you what it looks like if I knew and if there were images of it so Aegis was obviously tasked with developing this new warship it was identified as project monitor and began developing uh, from ground up it had six initial prototypes which were built by Aegis two prototypes being delivered to the UEE Navy for evaluation after all the construction and prototyping Aegis had developed a fast warship nor nimble enough to support a battle group while remaining inexpensive enough to be constructed in large numbers it went through five flights meaning it had been upgraded and evolved over time to our current decade just like when the Perseus had been from 2400 they had upgraded it put shields and obviously it still had some of its structural integrity from when it had first been developed when they didn't have shields so after going through the history of this vessel we know this vessel is a heavy gunship classed as a corvette it is a large vessel as stated that has a crew requirement of three to nine people it also has a cargo capacity of 40 scu the vessel costs 12 million four hundred and fifty nine thousand nine hundred uec in game if you wish to purchase this and use it in um the game its price of it in with real life money is 725 dollars as a war bond it is 600 and it is cash only if you do war bond obviously if you none of you knew that then now you do it is 112 meters long a 75 meter beam 16 meters in height and has a mass of 4.6 million and a maximum speed of a thousand ms if you are not a part of star citizen use my referral code that would help greatly so the components on this vessel is a one size two radar one two size two computers sorry two size three power plants two size three shield gens one uh, two size two fuel intakes two size three fuel tanks one size three quantum drive one size three jump drive and one size three quantum fuel tank now the turrets on this there are six size six man six manned turrets with quad size four rhino repeaters on them it has 32 size three missiles for the pilot obviously if a lot of people didn't know that now going over the obviously the components these are grade c military components most of them and they are quite efficient at what they do they're obviously designed for a reason for this vessel obviously having so many guns the power plants um obviously accommodating for those weapons and whatever is on board that ship now it says are the computers on this ship powerful enough to run like ai blades now it says it depends on what other computer blades you want to equip whether you upgrade the computer items but as it stands the plan that you won't be able to completely convert all turrets to be controlled via ai using the default loadout we present estimate then four to six can be converted to AI as standard without extra uh, item tweaks, but this system is still to be implemented. Now with the power plant, it asks, are the power plants sufficient to run 24 size four laser cannons or is the hammerhead designed to be used ballistic cannons? So yes, the default power plants are able to handle the energy requirements of the default weapons. It comes equipped with a very efficient military grade plants for this purpose. And I think it's a grade C, I'm pretty sure. So however, However, running ballistic weapons does provide another avenue of pursuit in, ter in terms of maintaining firepower. So another one, how will the hammerhead speed and maneuvering compare to similar ships like the Polaris? The hammerhead is aimed to be more nimble than the Polaris, but with ships of this type, it's all relative ships of this size aren't dogfighters, they're mobile weapons systems. The hammerhead excels at being a mobile defense ship and keeping steady or at least providing smooth movement to help the turrets stay trained on their targets, which is true. So hopefully with a good pilot, you are able to 
keep contact on your target and you're able to keep shooting them without any sort of interruption in there obviously so getting into it uh, getting into detail on this ship we know that it is rather good at what it does it is like obviously it's supposed to be nimble um, then the Polaris I find that a little hard to believe as in law and in the description of the Polaris it is supposed to be agile and quite fast for what their Polaris will be so obviously they're not supposed to be dogfighters We'll keep on track with the hammerhead. That's a conversation for another time. But so a little, it's like I said, it's a little contradicting, but I guess time will tell with this vessel. But back onto the hammerhead. If you were to use this, I don't see anyone being disappointed in any manner. But again, it requires a few people to crew it. I used to solo it for fun, which is doable, but I wouldn't go suggesting doing it just as willy nilly to have some fun. I mean, to have some fun would be good, but you know, I don't see people going out and doing this as a permanent thing. It wouldn't be very efficient, but it is a good ship to uh, have like a jointed space combat with friends having some camaraderie in the ship and it has a unique feel to it as many Aegis vessels do. So if you've seen the interior design of this or you've seen the interior design of the Javelin, the Idris, they all have a similar feeling but the Hammerhead has a unique feeling of a military feel and an industrialist and it just it's a raw feeling on the inside of the ship it's quite cool to see it as well so if you haven't been on one or toured the javelin like i said go have a look at some videos of the javelin and idris being toured there will be footage of this of the hammer head being toured in the video so check that out and watch the video because it's really going to show you how it feels and how good it actually is a lot of people do underestimate underestimate this ship but you know for what it is it's good for what it does and for what it was designed for so if you have any intentions of getting one i mean you can get it with real money but again you can go and get it in game with cash it's not going to be one of those really really limited ships it's going to be obviously everywhere in the verse again you might not need to get this because you might have friends that have it now going over again the hammerhead age like the hammerhead q a wasn't really anything special it says does a hammerhead come with military spec components or civilian ones since it is a military ship being sold to civilians so it comes with military grade c items in stock although once these are worn out many people find more efficient um, to replace other types for durability given the expense rarity of replacing these so the ship stats page lists the missile launches as being a Marsden 683 racks does this mean you can also replace them with the Marsden 616 or 625 racks in order to equip a small number of torpedoes instead well they aim to make it in, in, interchangeable the block out for them currently meets this metrics for allowing interchangeability but things may change as the ship moves through the pipeline but again this is already developed so that's an old piece of information i find that these q a's have a lot of old information that isn't really relevant anymore so i don't see it being you know any of some use so there's also the that missing piece that open piece in the ship the big hole in the middle it said could it not be filled with something like cargo or living quarters or is it just design choice so it's design choice there are practical reasons for it as well in our shipyard post on ship mass we indicate how we derive ship masses from their geometry. The hammerhead is pretty fast for its size since one of its duties is to help screen and protect larger ships from fighter attacks and increased internal volume even from filling in the negative space we would add mass in law the uee has ordered a lot of hammerheads thousands of them for a combat dedicated role adding a mass for off mission amenities wasn't deemed an effective design choice by the uee military so as you can see it's mostly going off efficiency it's not something that you want to have on the ship i guess it wouldn't really make it too much agile but as we all know at the moment the the hammerhead isn't it doesn't have a really an agile feeling it's sort of a sluggish feeling at the moment the redeemer probably feels a lot more sluggish than the hammerhead how's that right it's kind of crazy to think about that i mean flying it around right now it's it's kind of crazy so the turrets also have a 360 sort of coverage as well there are some blind spots on them which obviously you have the top and bottom turret to cover those blind spots as well so it's not always going to be you know something that you want to use or use like consistently but it is a good ship to play with and obviously get used to because it does bring that team play into it now a lot of people think uh, others aren't interested in being on their vessel because obviously they have their own ship to fly but it's all about 
the experience and playing the game with your friends and enjoying the time that you have together on the game. So I don't think a lot of people are going to be too fussed about, you know, being on the same ship together. It's just that, you know, it's is it really effective and efficient to use some of these ships sometimes but again you know going into the information detail of it yes it i feel like it would be somewhat useful in this ship it's good to have this sort of stuff in the game right now because it is cig's plan to bring out a completely dedicated team play later on down the track so if you're thinking about getting a, a hammerhead yes i would think it, it would be a good choice to obviously have a ccu chain to or more practically buy it in game because obviously this is going to be one of the more accessible ships later on down the track but it has got a quite a heavy price tag but again it's more than doable when you start doing jump town and you start doing all these you know threat and um nine tails missions if you start getting that like a lot of money from them so keep it in like favor of being one of the more dedicated and better ships that you can have but again it's not going to be as good as a lot of ships that you might have i prefer the redeemer but i do like the hammerhead and the feel of it obviously people have their personal preferences let me know down in the comments what you think of the hammerhead i think myself it is a great ship but i just don't have any use for it in my fleet right now but you know, looking at it for what it is, it is a really good ship and I would highly suggest looking into one of these. But again, if you have someone in your org or you have a loner for another one, I have loner for an Idris and the Javelin. It's so I don't really need to go and get one, but it is a good ship to have around. But again, a lot of people don't need the necess like necessity to have one because it's obviously not something that they would find in their game style or game type within Star Citizen. So going over the internals, obviously there's not a lot going on in this. At the front, you've got at the front bottom, you've got your captain's or and your co-pilot seat. At the left and the right at the front, you have two turret seats going back a little bit. You have two other uh, gun seats for your left and right at the back and as you walk into those you have escape pods walking into those so obviously this is going to have escape pods to uh, accommodate for the entire crew on the ship but behind that you also have components rooms in the middle you have a captain's quarters and your top turret access now the captain's quarters is quite basic but it is good now going back a little bit further you also have your cruise quarters with your showers and whatever else you need for your crew and then heading further back obviously you have your engineering and your very rear turret uh, entry now along there as well you can go up to the top to the main engineering room and then you can go across the top of the ship and then it brings you back down in front of the top turret so there's not a lot of internal mass going on in this ship there's not a lot of at anything going on in this ship really but it is quite basic and it is like i said it is a good ship and it is designed to be just that so if you're thinking about getting one it's definitely worth the thought but again it's a heavy price tag for what it is you might be better off paying the extra 25 dollars to get a polaris maybe pay a little bit less to get the perseus because in the grand scheme of things they are a little bit more effective for when they come out but again you will have a hammerhead for the polaris as a loner for the perseus you won't i don't think no you won't but it's just yeah it's all in the relativity and whether or not you need it but it's pretty much been a deep dive on the hammerhead i'll see you in the verse